Today we're getting rid of the light and give a proper use to this blackout roller shade. So there were a few things restored and installed on the tiny apartment before I came in and the guys who worked here they are supposed to be construction professionals, I mean not sure what to call them really but whatever. They horribly installed the blackout shades leaving gaps on the sides so I'm going to fix this now. First thing I did was to level the roller so that it lands evenly over the marble stool. I also took the opportunity to move the roller a bit closer to the glass, just making sure the window handle got enough room. This place used to have all inset exterior blinds that got replaced by the rollers after the window replacement. So that's why there's sort of a box on the top of the window that was repurposed to hide the roller. My idea here is really simple. I want a super clean look without protruding tracks on the side jams. And the blinds manufacturer doesn't have anything with low profile that could work on the situation. So what I did was to extend the side jams thickness, that in this case are concrete, as this is a concrete wall, and make a deep vertical groove on each side for the roller shade to run along. I grabbed some scraps of moisture resistant plywood and MDF and cut them to size leaving room to glue a strip of solid wood on the facing edge. I can now make a thin groove on the side jams using my table saw. You can also use a circular saw with a straight edge or a router with a small diameter bit. After checking for fit inside, I discovered the walls are not straight so I had to trim the front edge slightly on angle to make a better fit. Now we need to cut a little bit of the bottom bar so that the end of the fabric can be smashed and fit inside the grooves we just made. It seems to be working well, so I can attach the new jams to the concrete wall directly using some concrete anchors. For the top section, I reutilized part of the aluminum cover for the area closer to the window. Since I moved the roller closer to the glass, I had to cut this piece and thought I could get away with it with just an X-Acto knife, but I was wrong. It took a couple passes with the angle grinder until it finally snapped. I reattached the piece with two screws and used the old front section to find the correct place for the holes on this new water resistant MDF cover. I added a tab on each end to help it from falling when set in place. To install a thicker material like this MDF allows me to have the screw heads below the surface and make it all nice and flush later. I could then insert the fabric into the grooves and screw the top section to the wall. Make sure to test it a bunch of times. Much better. Ok, so now for the final touches, I did my best to disguise the fact that all this happened in the first place. 
I mixed up some mud to fill the holes and correct some unevenness from the materials and applied caulk on the corner gaps. I also made sure to protect the fabric with tape from any unwanted brush strokes. After sanding it all smooth, I primed and painted the whole area with the same shade of white as the walls. And that's it for this one. I'm super happy about the way this turned out and I hope this brings some great ideas for your next project. I'm confident that this will last as I used moisture resistant materials here but I'll keep you posted if something goes wrong. If you wonder how to find the screw heads later if this needs to be repaired or removed, you can just use a magnet to find them. Huge thanks to my Patreon members and thanks for watching everyone. Go get your hands dirty!